Hello, Internet people. It's Daniel with Driving and Dragons. Back today with a discussion about excess in gaming. And this is the part where I would probably play You're So Vain if I happen to have music in my videos, which I don't. Uh, 280ZX, finishing up that valve cover gasket. Let me know what you think about the new look down in the comment section below. I have posted some pictures of it before, but I should cover enough with this topic to actually get to where you see the final painted product finished up and I think it looks pretty sharp. So what do I mean when I'm talking about excess in gaming? Well my father used to tell me that pretty much everything in the world is bad if it's taken to excess. That in most cases what is good or what is bad is just a matter of extremism. And that happens in this tabletop role-playing game hobby all the time. It, you know, colors my Catholic worldview. If you think about it, a lot of sin, most sin in fact, is actually a product of excess. Excessive desire for the feeling of sexual gratification, which is a gift from God for married couples, leads to the sin of lust. Self-confidence, which people will all agree is a good thing to be confident and built up in within yourself to have a good feeling of your own capabilities and self-worth taken to an extreme leads to the sin of pride. You can say that the need to relax and not take life so seriously and, you know, as they say, stop and smell the roses taken to an excess leads to the sin of sloth where laziness begins to affect others. There are numerous numerous examples of this uh, one of the most common ones is you know drunkenness there is no reason why you can't drink alcohol however if you drink alcohol excessively you become a danger to yourself and others and it's generally a bad thing and of course what excess is is going to be determined predominantly by your own personal tolerance in that case but you know not to get off on that when we talk about excess here, this is where a lot of these arguments and why the arguments become a problem. First, let me say this. Debates within the game, within game design, and within the style of play need to continue to happen forever. They need to happen in good faith, like I said in my previous video on arguing about TTRPGs. We've got to get away from these facile arguments. We've got to get away from this tribalism. We've got to get away from straw manning each other's points, from being reductive. We've got to get away from personal attacks and latching on to personal attacks to be the, you know, the, to be the vehicle of response. And we've got to get away from the just like I said, the n nonsense reductive arguments where we take single pieces out of context or where we take something that a, you know, a presenter says that is an obvious hyperbole or is a rhetorical example that's designed to be more, um, more aggressive and more demonstrative. And then we turn around and take that as the representation of the argument. Uh, a lot of times this happens in responses to responses where, somebody reduces somebody's argument and then somebody turns around and does the same thing back to them, you know, saying, oh, you know, he says the, the entire argument is this and that's not the argument. Well, stop doing that. Stop reducing each other's arguments down to ridiculousness. Listen to it and kind of pull what you can from it. To his credit, this is something that the basic expert has actually generally been pretty good about. Now, he has some hard line stances, and I think that a lot of his reasoning is flawed, and I do think he intentionally misses the point a lot of the time when he's debating with people about gaming. However, he generally makes a good faith effort to at least try and listen and address the other arguments, and when we were talking about the Mythic Dungeon thing, he even looked back and has, I mean, I see it as a revision, but, you know, it's a fair revision, where he says this, like, hey, this is not the only kind of dungeon style you can have. You know, the, the goblin warren that's just a cave that has goblins in it, yeah, it should make perfect sense. But the dungeon that doesn't make sense existing in the game as just, you know, a the mythical underdark is perfectly acceptable too. That statement is actually very much true and is a good jumping off point for a discussion of when one thing should exist, when the other should exist. On the opposite side of 
basic experts argument where you have people being wrong is the people who act like absolutely everything has to make perfect sense. It all has to work out in a logical and realistic world. That is also false depending on the game world that you have decided to play in. The social contract is something that has been talked about for years in tabletop role-playing games. And part of that social contra- uh, contract is that when we sit down to play these games, we all agree on the style that we're going to be playing and what those expectations are. And we the only real hard, fast rule where you're doing it wrong actually happens, where you're actually playing make-believe long as the uh, make-believe wrong as the facile argument that is usually just used to diffuse situations and get out of things comes from there is a way you can definitely play make-believe wrong and that is when everybody sits down at the table and agrees to a specific outline and a specific mode of play and that we're going to go by a certain you know a certain set of parameters and then people change that in particular the gm changes that for instance if i say you know, let's take dice fudging because dice fudging is a good example of this. Dice fudging is one of those things where excess is the problem. Dice fudging is fine. Dice fudging is in right there in the rule book in just about every role playing game, and it's especially right there in the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide and um, original AD and D. But dice fudging taken to an extreme ruins a game, and it ruins a game because it takes away the risk and it just trains players that there's no consequences for their actions which why are we even playing the game if there's no consequences dice fudging no dice fudging for instance taken back to an extreme is also a bad thing because you have eliminated the realism from your world the dice only have a limited range in which to determine the variables in what can be very nuanced situations in game and there should be some adjustments made based on that. Now, the reason I bring that up where I show those extremes is not to say that the absolute rule is there should be some dice fudging, but not too much dice fudging. That's not the the reason to bring that example up. The reason to bring that example up is to show you what I mean when I say, yes, you can play make-believe wrong. The way you can play make-believe wrong is when you sit down at a table with a group of players and you say explicitly there will be no dice fudging. There will be no fudging of results. We'll roll everything in the open. And then you turn around and fudge results. Now you're playing make-believe wrong. It's not because, oh, that's a wrong, a wrong way to play. It's because you have now violated the social contract. The same thing comes into when we talk about mythical dungeons and stuff of that nature. If you are going into a gonzo fantasy style game where it just does not matter and it's it's basically video game-ish, it's simulating different scenarios, different challenges, different encounters, but it's not simulating necessarily a realistic living, breathing world, then as long as that's what everybody's agreed to, you're you're doing just fine. And that mythic dungeon idea fits very well. If you're playing a kind of simulationist world that's based on certain rules and whatnot, however, there is a arch demi-lich or a great demon or something of that matter that is warping that reality within a certain area that makes kind of the mythic dungeon or mythical dungeon, once again, that also fits very correctly. However, if you're playing a game where it's pretty much explicitly agreed on in that social contract that we're trying to make things as rational as possible. We have a very regimented world that's extremely realistic and whatnot. And then you have this dungeons that make no sense. You are now playing make-believe wrong. Why? Because the agreement at the table was to have this very realistic world and it has been that agreement has been broken and that is what makes it wrong. Now... That argument does need to go away, but it doesn't need to go away in the fact that there's there's no situation in where it's correct. It needs to go away as the default response to get out of an uncomfortable conversation. And realistically, what needs to go away in the tabletop role-playing game hobby is gatekeeping other people's tables. What needs to go away is 
the bringing of the tabletop role-playing game, bringing your politics, your social movements and whatnot into the tabletop role-playing game hobby to then attempt to co-opt the tabletop role-playing game hobby as a vehicle to push your real-world problems and real-world beliefs and real-world gains. That is the kind of thing that needs to go away. Speaking of excess, safety tools. Safety tools is simply an excess of the don't be an asshole rule. All that's needed is don't be an asshole, is don't push people's boundaries for no reason. Don't be intentionally offensive or intentionally intentionally transgressive towards others. Safety tools is that concept taken to an absolute extreme to where the violation has become more extreme. You can't have an accidental violation. You are instantly 100% in the wrong. And it's this is because don't be an asshole is kind of a golden rule in the social construct, in the, in the social contract rather, not using safety tools means you're violating that and you're evil. All right. That is one of those situations where a good thing taken to excess becomes bad. Those are the kind of things that need to get out of the hobby. And those are the kind of things that need to be argued aggressively and pushed out. However, what we don't need to do is try and shut down debates within the hobby about mechanics, about simulationism, gameism, and narrativism, which, you know, go reaching back into the day, you know, the triumvirate, the, the triangle graph of how you play the game. There's simulationism where it's all about just simulating activity in the world. You know, you, you roll the dice and the dice simulates those things and... Gameism, where the game rules are above all else. And narrativism, where the story is above all else. Personally, I think if you're sitting on the point of any of these, any of the point of that triangle graph, you're screwing up. Because if you take the narrative, narrativism to an extreme, there's no point in playing a game, write a book. If you take the simulationism to an extreme, nothing makes sense whatsoever. And... Again, you know, why not just plug it into a computer and see what happens? And if you take the gameism to an extreme, you end up in these situations where the game falls flat and people are not satisfied because the game has its own flaws, but because you're extraordinarily gamist, you're going to play through the flaws and you're going to have the problems. Those discussions, those arguments about mythical dungeons, about realism, about how realistic your dungeon design should be, you have to define your terms. You have to define your terms clearly. and these, But then these debates need to happen because in a lot of cases, it's not because I'm trying to convince the basic expert, for instance, to change his or the RPG pundit to change his opinion. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm putting out my point, they're putting out their point, you know, Max Leal's putting out his point, Double D's putting out his point, and people who listen to all of them find something somewhere in the middle, or maybe closer to one side or the other, they listen to those points, and they find the place on that triangle that suits them and their gaming group the best. And maybe they turn around and make a whole new game system that caters to that. And we get to explore that and have that in the hobby as well. That only comes from having these kind of discussions in good faith. We just have to stay away from the excessiveness and being so entrenched in our excessiveness that we turn around and apply these bad faith arguments to the other side. And turn it into the personal attack. Turn it into the because you're part of a cult. And turn it in to the just mockery that it turns into at times. Now, I said before, you're so vain, you probably think this is about you. Another thing, too, is just because you get mentioned in a video does not mean the video is about you. You should probably listen to the whole thing and understand where it's coming from. And that when you're just a footnote, you're just a footnote. But anyway... I'll see you guys next time. Like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, go buy the OGGM's merch.